Hey guys, it's Dave here with another video. Thanks for watching as always. Well, a lot can change in a week in the space industry and uh, none of it has been good really for Rocket Lab's competitors. We've got a lot of bad news for several different companies out there. Meanwhile, Rocket Lab had a successful launch from their United States launch complex. This marks the second launch from that new launch pad. Operations seem to be getting more smooth there. The first piece of big news obviously is around Virgin Orbit. I'm sure many of you are already aware. They recently recently announced they're furloughing almost all their staff, so basically they're being put on unpaid leave, and the company is suspending operations while they search for additional funding. Now, um, sorry to toot my own horn a little bit here, but there's plenty of people out there who will make sure to point it out to me if I ever make any mistakes down in the comments below. So I just want to point out this video I just made last week talking about why I thought Virgin Orbit was in some serious trouble and uh, even discuss the potential of shorting the stock, which would be where I gain when their stock goes down, kind of the opposite of buying a stock. I didn't end up doing that, but if I had, I would have made, you know, over 30% in a day. Uh, still nice to be right every once in a while though. <laughs> I think I am gonna set up a little small uh, play fund where I just have like small amounts of money that I, you know, I'm okay with losing that I'm gonna put into these uh, fun speculative trades where I have ideas around the space industry. There's a lot of times where I feel like I know what's gonna happen and I don't quite have the conviction to pull the trigger and then it turns out I was right. So I'm gonna start doing that a little bit, not necessarily shorting because I really do that extremely rarely. This was just one of those very rare cases where it just seems so obvious to me that something was going to happen with this company soon with that news with uh, Richard Branson forcing through that deal. And it, it just seemed like a no brainer. So I'm going to start making a little more of these fun trades, probably just small amounts of cash get more experience with them, see how it goes, and uh, I'll let you know, hopefully more on the long side than the short side. But with that out of the way, let's dive into the latest news around Rocket Lab's competition and why I think Electron is looking like the king of the small launch space for the foreseeable future. So starting off here with the Financial Times, obviously the big news about Virgin Orbit that I already discussed, uh, Branson's Virgin Orbit in talks about potential buyout. The shares are hit after the company announces operational pause and puts staff on unpaid furlough. So, uh, Richard Branson's Virgin Orbit is in discussions with two financial investors about a potential buyout or fundraising after the British billionaire refused to inject more money into the rocket launch company he founded in 2017. So it seems like Branson is a little reluctant to invest more money in this company, something I said might be happening soon when we were looking at those previous investments he's made. It's interesting to hear they do have two investors who uh, are interested I have to wonder whether they'd be buying the whole operation, just some assets or what would happen. But continuing on, uh, CEO Dan Hart is racing to secure emergency funding to keep the company afloat until it can prove its launch system following the failed mission from the UK in January. And I have to ask, so they prove it, what then, right? Um, the revenue from a single launch is not enough to break even on the quarter. So even if they prove out this launch system, which they frankly already have because they've had a successful launch in the past, they've had several. So to me, it is a, a mostly proven launch system despite the error, but that doesn't address the larger issue of the company, you know, making a profit or breaking even even. So Virgin Orbit, 75% owned by Branson's Virgin Group. They announced an operational pause. 700 staff have been put on unpaid furlough. And I do have to say right out, though, I, I do feel bad for these staff. I know I was kind of saying like, oh, it's good for Rocket Lab, which I suppose it is good in a way because they're looking way ahead of the competition. But uh, I feel for the staff, everyone who's worked on this company, I'm sure there's great engineers in the company, and hopefully they can find new employment if they do not get good news in a few weeks. Shares tumbled 33% in trading. People close to the company said the cash crunch comes just two weeks before they were hoping 
for clearance from authorities to launch a new mission. And my, my question once again is then what? However, the company has run out of cash and without a new injection soon, they'll be unable to fly the mission. All options are on the table in discussions with financial investors, including the sale of the whole business, a stake, or even just the launch technology. I do have to say, I don't think it makes a lot of sense for other launchers to buy the technology or even assets from it. Cause like what, say what a rocket lab, what are they gonna do? They're, they have no reason to, try to implement a whole new method of launch with a whole different rocket when they already have one. Uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense. It's not like some of these software companies where they can buy out another company and it can make more sense. In this case, they are completely different systems and it, it, you really can't uh, integrate them in any meaningful way as far as I'm concerned. Branson, by the way, invested $1 billion in Virgin Orbit. That's a ton of money and $60 million since November. So uh, he's definitely out a, a good chunk of change at this point. Don't have a ton of sympathy, sympathy for him, though. As I said, I really didn't like that move he made. We're trying to guarantee he is able to close on some of their assets before other investors. But we'll see what will happen in the coming weeks. It was costing $50 million in cash per quarter to run. So uh, they'll need at least $50 million for even a single quarter. And to my mind, they're at least, you know, half a year away from breaking even if that. So they would need at least $100 million, probably more, to give them even a chance. Oh, and by the way, guys, I didn't say this earlier, but as always, anyone who hasn't subscribed, if you would be interested in subscribing for more videos on stocks and space stocks specifically definitely would be appreciated and every like goes to help the algorithm so please do that if you have a second now let's continue on with the video next up we have astra seeking more time to avert that nasdaq delisting that they were so worried about i've been keeping my eye on this for a while the stock has been below a dollar per share for quite a long time to be frank i thought they would have made a move by now to address this do a reverse split something along those lines where uh, their shareholders may get less shares but those shares become worth more in order to keep the share price up above a dollar at least because uh, if they do get delisted, I think that's a big trouble for investors. Now, what they're doing this week is actually asking the NASDAQ for more time to bring their stock price above $1 and avoid being delisted. Back in October of last year, they got notified by the NASDAQ that they fell out of compliance due to the shares being below $1 for 30 consecutive business days. They have until April 5th to come into compliance that's really not a lot of time they're like really running short of time here i don't know why they waited so long to address this but it does seem like they're in big trouble and even if they do avoid delisting their financial situation while currently better than virgin orbits is still looking pretty grim as well and in my opinion they have a bit more runway ahead of them than virgin orbit does obviously well they haven't furloughed their staff yet but that runway to me is not looking like it's long enough to get them to the launch of their new Rocket 4 system. The share price on closing on Thursday was only 42 cents a share, and the CFO wrote in a blog's post that they formally requested another six month window to raise the share price. To be frank, I don't know why they should get that because you've already got 180 days. Why do you need an extra six months to do something about this? But, you know, they, they say they have no reason to believe it won't be granted, so perhaps it will. That'll give them a six-month reprieve. Personally, I have my doubts that in six months, the share price will naturally be above a dollar a share for 10 days. So they still might have to pursue some sort of a reverse split scenario. More of delaying the inevitable than anything else, I suppose, at this point. But it's another company to keep an eye on, another competitor for Rocket Lab going through a lot of trouble right now. The delisting could deepen their financial woes, potentially pushing the company into a private market where many investors are anxious over inflation. And by the way, they have not yet reported their fourth quarter 2022 results. Those are coming March 30th, so I'll be very interested to see how much cash they have left on hand at that point. Something to watch very closely, and obviously during these Q4 results, you can see big moves in the share price as well. 
and then on to ABL Space Systems. Now this one is a private space company, which means they don't trade on the public stock markets and we have much less of a view into their financial situation. I can't really just go take a look at their balance sheet and all that sort of thing. Obviously they're not really making money at this point, I don't believe, at least from launch. But they did have a failure back in January as well, where their new launcher uh, failed to reach orbit on its first attempt. Now, I will say in their favor, uh, this was just a first attempt. Space is quite hard, as we all know. Just because they had a failure does not mean this rocket is not going to be a success over the long run. I mean, it's not a good sign that it, they failed, obviously, and uh, it's a lot of time and money figuring out what went wrong. But this is kind of more normal for space as opposed to scrapping a whole rocket. So I wouldn't count out ABL completely just yet, but still... Electron definitely way in the lead compared to this rocket. We're already getting close to figuring out reusability, whereas this is an expendable launch vehicle. They're just trying to get to orbit for the first time. So uh, Rocket Lab well ahead on that one as well. And then, of course, we have Firefly Alpha. This rocket is still in development. Um, one thing I did want to point out here is although Firefly Alpha is considered a small launch vehicle or small lift, this payload to orbit number is much higher for this rocket than the Electron. It is, uh, we're looking at basically a ton to orbit versus Electron around 300 kilograms. So I don't even know if I would consider these both direct competitors. Even though they're both considered small launchers, I think they tend to go for different payloads and that again shows in the cost per launch which is showing here at a number of 15 to 17.6 million dollars versus electron is currently at 7.5 so under half what it would cost you to launch firefly alpha now obviously if you have a larger payload that is about a ton it you would have to pay more money because you can't go on an electron but if you do have a payload 300 kilograms or less that can fit on an electron um there's no competition really it's just uh it's not even a decision it's just you know that's what you have to launch on so uh, this rocket while it has had uh one failure and one partial failure even if they do get it going which i do kind of believe firefly will get it going eventually i don't consider it to be any danger to electrons place in the overall market and then of course we have terran one now relativity space has had several delays and aborts with this rocket on the pad recently. And again, I give them a lot more leeway on this than uh, someone like Astra, because uh, again, this is their first rocket. They're trying to get it to go off. There's always these issues that you have to work through. So we had abort number one was a corner case in the stage separation automation a few seconds before T minus zero so that it aborted at half a second. It's so frustrating when you're watching one of these launches and then it aborts half a second before the launch. <laughs> it's, it's the worst feeling, really. Um, anyway, the team recycled the vehicle, secured a new liftoff time, and then abort number two at T minus 45 seconds. They had an automated abort on stage two fuel pressure, which was one PSI per too low uh, pressure per square inch. Uh, is, Relativity is saying the team worked hard today. They had a couple more delays around weather and things like that. Uh, I will be interested to see if this rocket does go off. They've been working hard on it. They've been having a ton of delays, but they haven't lost the vehicle yet, and it's still in good health. So these delays do happen for early launches, especially, or even late launches. Uh, you can always have weather issues, and these issues arise. So definitely going to be interesting to see what happens with this launch. But by the way, talking about the Terran R or sorry, the Terran 1. Once again, I would say this isn't really a threat to Electron in any way. Their cost per launch here is 12 million versus Electron's 7.5. So once again, if you can get away with a 7.5 million launcher over 12, you're obviously going to pick that one. The payload to low Earth orbit is again even larger than that Firefly Alpha. So to me, these two vehicles, Terran 1, Firefly Alpha, are much more in competition with each other for that one ton launch space, which by the way, I'm not too sure if that's a great area to be in. I know Peter has said he felt like it was kind of a no man's land. Too big to be just the small launcher and not big enough 
to really move some of those heavier payloads, but perhaps he's wrong on this one. We'll see. In any event, these two rockets really competing in that one ton space where Electron is 300 kilograms. So to me, Electron's more direct com competition would be closer to the Virgin Orbit rocket, which we have seen suffer catastrophic financial issues and uh, we'll see what happens with Astra's Rocket 4 because that one would be more of a direct competitor to Electron as well. I have my doubts whether they will make it to the pad and launch successfully in an ongoing basis but that does remain to be seen. So yeah we have uh, Virgin Orbit furloughing all its staff shutting down operations looking very bleak for that company that competitor to Rocket Lab. I do wish all the best to any employees of Virgin Orbit out there. I hope you guys are all okay and uh, anyone who invested in or Virgin Orbit and really believed in this company sorry that it hasn't worked out for you so far. It seems like management has maybe mishandled the financial situation and let you guys down. So sorry to you guys on that one as well. Then we have Firefly. They've had one failure, one partial failure, where the satellite didn't get to the correct orbit. But even if they do succeed, I don't really consider them a direct competitor to Electron. We also have ABL. They had a failure recently. And Terran 1 has been sitting on the pad for quite a while trying to get going. But to me, Rocket Lab is really the undisputed king of the launch vehicles in their segment, in their little weight class if you will very capable little rocket looking like we're getting closer and closer to reusability even being able to fish it out of the ocean and reuse it so i'm feeling uh, more confident than ever in terms of the electron itself and in terms of space systems i've always felt good about that side of the business for rocket lab the biggest question marks remain around neutron but that's definitely going to be the case until we get launching and we can really see how the market shapes up obviously there's going to be unknowns around a vehicle in development so bad news for rocket labs competitors good news for rocket lab let me know down in the comments who would you rather invest in if you had to choose would it be virgin orbit or would it be astra definitely interested to hear what you guys have to say on that one which company is in a better situation i know astra is not in immediate risk of bankruptcy where virgin orbit might be if they can't raise additional money but a lot of people believe Richard Branson is going to come through and, and write another big check. So let me know if you fall under that category as well. As for me, I'm going to stick with my Rocket Lab shares and we'll continue to watch the situation going forward. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Thanks for watching as always. Please subscribe if you haven't yet and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.